Welcome back to part 9 of our After Effects tutorials. My name is Arnold Faller. If you missed some of the previous videos, make sure that at least you watch part 5 about 3D layers because that is what we need in today's projects. There is also a good part of Photoshop work in creating the parallax effect. If you want to improve your skills there, I'm offering also a series of hands-on Photoshop tutorials on this channel. So make sure to subscribe and also uh, I'm, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. But let's get started by looking at a couple of examples. The parallax effect tries to bring pictures to life by adding the impression of uh, three-dimensional depth and motion. So here is a couple of examples that I found on the internet. The starting point is always a 2D image and by taking the image on different layers and then adding some movement to the camera inside the picture, you create this 3D effect. We are also able not only to move parts of the, of the camera and the different layers, but we're also able to move parts of the picture object itself. For example, to create this waving effect here in the cloth, which is post uh, on, only done in in the image. And the next example here is uh, taking landscape photography and bringing it on different layers and creating some beautiful effects there. Slight movement down towards, there's also some ripples in the water and so on. So all of that is put on different layers. Sometimes you can see the uh, not the error, but you can see some of the effect. For example, here it looks like as if those stones are sliding uh, and so on. There's also some ripple effect noise in the water that looks uh, more natural. So let's get started. Uh, and what we're going to start with is in uh, we're going to prepare our images in Photoshop first. We're going to put the different elements in different distances on different layers and then we bring those layers into After Effects and see how we can create a bit of motion in order to, uh, to, uh, to create the 3D effect. So I'm starting in Photoshop with um, an image that I found somewhere pretty simple. It's a, a baseball player and I took it because it is a really sharp um, object in the foreground and a very blurry background and it's simple to get it onto different layers. So let's get started. I'm starting with the background image and the first thing I'm gonna uh, do is I'm gonna create a couple of um, a couple of uh, uh, duplic uh, duplicates. So either with right click duplicate layer or control J on your keyboard. I'm gonna rename those uh, those layers and call this the player. And the second one is the um, uh, fixed background. You'll see right on oh, this is the backup, so the, the I don't need the background right now. So how does it work? First, I'm going to select the guy here. There's different methods. We can spend a lot of time. I'm going to do it a bit faster, but you can spend a, uh, some more time here. I'm going to use here under create, I'm going to use the object selection tool. And the object selection tool, all you need to do is you draw a rectangle around the object that you want to separate from the background. So in this case, the player, and then pretty fast you got a quite good copy. In this case, it's not that good, so I'm going to I'm going to refine it a bit. Therefore, uh, I'm uh, zooming in, let's say, to uh, maybe 200%. Then I use the the quick selection tool. Uh, when you want to add something to your selection, you just move your mouse over it. And when you want, if you want to remove something, it's Alt, and you remove the parts. You could also uh, do the detail work later on when you have a mask, but in this case, I'm, I don't want to spend too much time here. So maybe that, or maybe let's remove this a little bit. Then we got some additional here, less there, less here. Watch this. Okay, so there's some there. So, good, that's it. Down here, the tip of the shoe, yeah. You can always refine it later on. That's, oh, here. 
that's fine. And now I'm going to, uh, now I have a perfect, not a perfect, but I have a selection around my, uh, around my uh, player. And I'm gonna use the, la the layer that I called player. And while it is selected, I'm selecting the layer player and I give it a layer mask. That means it creates a mask of the outline of the player. That's quite good. And now in this mask, I could go inside now and uh, fix it, but I'm, I'm going, only going to fix the, the fingers here because they will look weird somehow. So when you're on the mask, you're painting either black or white. Black means you hide the content of the layer and white you uh, reveal it to show it. So uh, with a brush and the brush of course will be a, uh, not of course, will be a soft round brush, not too big. So about this, and I'm painting in black, so I'm gonna remove this. What is the flow here? Uh, don't have that much time. Um, here's the flow. If with the a, a a keyboard shortcut X, you can also bring in part of the layer and uh, switch foreground and background color. So let's uh, do with black between the fingers, not too much. So, good, and that's uh, enough for right now. And now I also called a layer fixed background because not only, I need, not, not only do I need the player to be on an extra layer, let's turn it off, but I also want the player to be removed from the background. And that is surprisingly simple and that is also why I took this image. Uh, so uh, first I need the selection again from the player. To get the selection again out of the mask, it's a control click. So you hit control click on the mask and then you get the selection. Now I'm gonna make the selection a couple of pixels larger. So like I'm making it uh, wider than it is. That's done by select and modify expand. Uh, yeah, 10, maybe, no, yeah, 10 pixels, okay. So I'm gonna add 10 pixels around it that will make the selection larger to make sure that everything is included that I am that I don't have on the on the selection now on the layer fixed background I select my fixed background I'm gonna fill it edit fill with content aware so I'm going to select the layer fixed background then I use edit fill and content aware it takes a while and then there it is, it's gone. So now if you need to uh, adjust something manually, like make sure that it looks like a little bit like a mess, but it look from far away, it looks like an audience, that's fine. So if you wanna fix something in here, you should only fix the areas that are next to the player. So don't fix something, let's say that's in the middle here, but fix something that's close to the player. But for right now, I'm fine. It looks fine, even though if I move my player, a little bit, you know, you don't see something weird in the background. And the next thing is, I'm also going to add a baseball. Oops, sorry. Uh, the baseball, I didn't know that. The baseball is not an RGB image. So let's take the baseball, bring it in here. And the baseball, let's call the layer baseball. And I'm gonna get rid of the white background of the baseball, different ways to do it. I guess uh, I, we are quite happy with the quick selection tool. So either select the white background or the, the player itself. You can also use a, a select color range. And, oops, did I hit? Select color range. It's not selected. So, on the layer, so let's try it again. Select color range. Ah, okay, because we are sampling all layers. <laughs> it's not good. Um, we should have done only one. Doesn't matter. Let's go for a quick, or you can also use the magic wand tool that does it quite happen here. Usually I would use a mask as well, but in this case I just hit delete because I'm anyway blurring the baseball later on. The size doesn't, uh, doesn't matter right now. I want three distances to the camera, so the background is the um, third, um, third of the way, then we have the player, and the closest is the baseball. The sizes of the objects, I'm gonna adjust it later in After Effects. Make sure you save all the content on, on a different 
uh, layer. Make sure you name it properly. So, some have a mask, it doesn't matter, some don't. And um, the background is just backup, so I leave it there, but it's turned off. Make sure it's turned off, but you can anytime turn it off later. So let's save it as a Photoshop file, PSD file. And let's call it, uh, yeah, baseball player is fine. And save it there. Good. Uh, I'm going to keep it open. If I need to change something in Photoshop, I can anytime do it and then overwrite uh, the file that will be updated there. So here is After Effects. The picture of the baseball player is 1920 by uh, 1080. So I can use a new composition there or I can, um, I can do that also later. Let's start by dragging the PSD file into my project folder here. It will import it. So make sure that you import it, not as footage, but the whole composition. It means you import the whole layer, the whole stack of layers. And of course, it should not be merged into one, but it should be editable layers. So I had every single layer in there because we want to put them at different distances, scale them differently and so on. So there it is. Uh, what I got is I got a composition and uh, the layers for the composition. If you need to update them, you have to, like if you save something in Photoshop and you need to update it, just select the layer that you want to update. For example, this one, fixed background, and then you hit right click and reload the footage, then it will be updated. So here is my composition. I could take the composition and drag it into a new composition, but it, I can do that later. Let's just double click baseball player and that opens the composition down here in the window. Uh, I, I just want to do something to the picture for about, uh, I don't know, four seconds or so. If you watch the videos, it's just short uh, clips that I'm doing. Let me uh, fix that first. Usually it looks like this. So here's my composition open and you can see those, uh, those three layers. I can remove the background here. So select the background, hit delete. Now there's only my three layers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring those three layers into, 3D, into the 3D world by selecting, uh, clicking the 3D layer button just for all three of them. And in addition to that, I'm going to add a camera. So um, uh, layer, new camera, um, it doesn't matter a lot, the one note or two note. Uh, I suggest that you use a wide angle lens, so not a 200 millimeter tele lens, but something uh, rather small here. So uh, there's, there's not much of a difference, but let's go for uh, 24 millimeter and hit OK. You can also uh, adjust it, but it's better to start with uh, one like this. So now I'm going to switch my view here to not one view, but two views horizontal. In the, on the right side, I can see the, um, the effect or the, the, how it looks like. And on the left side, I can choose whatever I want. So I use on the right side, I use uh, my active camera. On the left side here, i using a top view. I'm looking from the scene from the top. Here is my camera. Here are all the elements. They're all in the same distance to the camera. And this is actually uh, my, my sharp distance. So if I use uh, some blur later on, I have to adjust that so, it, so it's uh, at, the, at the distance that will be blurry. Now I'm going to bring, I'm gonna leave my background as it is. And I'm gonna bring my baseball player like to like one third of the distance, I guess. So I'm clicking on player and here it is. It's all in one layer and I'm gonna take it by its C axis. You can also open it up and use its C axis. So you can also hit P for position and find its C axis and bring it closer. I'm like to drag it. And as you drag it closer to the camera, obviously I'm doing one third distance to the camera it obviously gets larger because it's a wide angle lens. So when you move closer to the camera, you quickly increase the size. So what I need to do is when I get it closer, I also need to scale it down. So it's a scaled smaller. So I select my player, I hit S for scale. 
and make sure the three are locked. And now I'm scaling it down. If you want to be close to the previous size, you just to have to look at the frame around the layer and make sure the frame is uh, somewhere where the, uh, where the frame of the picture is. You can also scale it smaller, makes no difference, but that should be uh, somewhere where it was before. It will get larger because we will get closer later on. So let's stay on the little bit smaller side. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to do the same thing with the baseball. Select the baseball, it's also at the same distance, and I'm going to move it closer. This time, like again, one third, so I have one third for every distance. And the baseball is really large, so it's, uh, it was large before, now it's way too much, way too large, so there it is. And I'm going to select my baseball, hit S for scale, and also scale it down either to the previous size or to a uh, even smaller size. Uh, I'm going to move it as well because I don't want it. I want it like in front of the player somewhere over here. So, and now how do we achieve the uh, 3D effect? First, we're going to select the camera. Not right now, I'm just showing it. And we're going to get closer. And as we get closer, you can see the three distances react differently to the camera movement, of course, because they are in different distances and you can see the ball like almost pops out of the out of the window. Let me get the camera back, edit, uh, undo. And the second thing is we're going to use the uh, puppet, the pin tool uh, to pin down the guy and slightly move him and even move him horizontal. So it looks like a super slow motion uh, as if he's running. Uh, but one one step at a time. Let's um, let's make a quick animation. And as I said, I'm going to try to do four seconds, four seconds of animation. So whenever I animate something, I only do it in the first four seconds of my clip. I'm going to start with the ball. The ball should slightly rotate and move a little bit. So I'm starting from the very beginning. Here's baseball. Moving is R for rotation. And you might notice when you rotate it, uh, it rotates around its, um, its anchor point. And that is not what you want. So let's open baseball one more time. The anchor point, I'm going to move the anchor point first. I'm going to move the anchor point to the center of the ball. So go for anchor point without animating it. I'm going to move it so it's in the center of the ball. One more time and then here it's up. So, like this. Now it's in the center. Um, um, if I change my position now, again, I move it out a little bit like this, up. So let's do the four seconds of animation. First, my position. Uh, I'm starting here. I hit animate for position. Go to four seconds. It doesn't, it's not too precise. It's approximately four seconds. And now animate something. And that is a slight move to the right. Maybe a little bit up like this. Okay. The next thing that I want to animate, and I'm going back to the beginning, is... Um, is rotation and it's C rotation so it's rotation around the axis don't do too much undo bring it to the beginning hit C rotation animate bring it oh now it's a good tip if you move your time slide and you want to be precisely at the same point that you have been before hold your shift key and it will snap it will snap to those points so, and now I'm rota rotating inside. Imagine somebody shooting a ball and they always give it a little spin. Uh, don't spin it too much, just a little bit, maybe backwards even. Just a, in four seconds, it's super slow motion, so it shouldn't mo move too much. There it is. So, that is the ball movement in four seconds. The next thing is our camera will be moving in in four seconds. Therefore, I select my camera. And what is it? It's position. So I'm just moving slightly in. P for position. Uh, beginning of the animation, I hit animate for position. And now I move to four seconds. Uh, if it doesn't snap, that is the reason because it's not open. 
uh, if, if I open the baseball, it will snap to my four second clip. Uh, baseball, uh, sorry, a baseball camera position. And now, as we are four seconds later, I'm going to move my camera and push it in. Not too far, we can always change it. So just a little bit to make it make the player larger. Just a little bit moving in. Okay, and that is for right now everything. Now we're going to animate the, the player within those four seconds. And to do that, uh, I'm going to double click the player because I don't want uh, a, the whole composition. I just want the layer and therefore I need one, uh, one large picture only. So I'm going to switch to one view and this is the view and I'm going to use the um, use the, lay, the player only. So I double click the player. It opens in its extra window. And now I use the, make sure you are at the beginning of your animation. I use those, this pin here, it's called puppet position pin tool. So use the pin and I'm going to use and place pins on the body of the, of the player. In the usual positions, uh, like where we have joints in the hip and the knee in the ankle and the elbow hand and so on. If you want to move something specific, then uh, like the, the toes, then you need two pins there. But it's, uh, we're going to start with a simple. So I'm going to use a pin here in the ankle, knee, um, hip. I do two for the hip for every foot, knee here. There, there's an extra pin in the toe. Then we have the, the hands, shoulder. I'm going to place one in the neck and one in the head. And actually there's the hand and the elbow is only one. So if you want one in the middle, if you want to bend it, Good, that's it. So now what we're doing, we're going to add a slight animation. And if you add the pin, um, the pin puppet, pin posi uh, puppet position pin tool, that's what it's called. Um, you don't, if you want to animate it, you don't need to press animate somewhere. So it is made for animation. So all you need to do is go to the end of your animation or to the next step and then change something. And what I want to do is I want to change, uh, move it so it looks a little bit like a running position. So what I'm going to do is I'm straighten up the left foot. Oh, the uh, it's the left foot. Yes. I'm going to straighten the left foot. So I'm going from selection tool. I select this pin here and I move it, make it slightly more straight. Don't, don't make too much because it will weirdly deform it. Also, the second one will knee a bit back, the heels up. And of course, the toes will follow, so it's not freezing. And also here, the elbow go up, the hand will follow this way. And maybe just a little bit of motion in the head and this hand going down. So uh, in four seconds, it'd be really small and there's some weird movement there. So let's also uh, do some okay and oh it looks funny but you can you can always make it better that is that was uh, for animating the layer let's go back to our composition and um, you see it's not uh, that that strong anymore and now I'm also going to animate the guy so it's moving so it's he's moving horizontally a bit so I'm going to select the whole player hit P for position beginning of my animation animate I'm going to move it sideways a bit first and then going to the end of my animation and move him uh, to the left so Okay, so that's it. Very, it doesn't look doesn't look good, but doesn't matter. It's just for showing you how the technique works. Okay, so we have a movement in the camera. You can also have a, uh, a pan in if you want. So like uh, you can also sorry a pan in the camera. So just make the, the the view larger and pan inside. And I think that's it for right now. It's um, 
that's all the principles. I'm going to show you another example, which is a bit more work in, no, a bit more work, a bit more work in Photoshop, but then we'll do something else with it. And in the second example, I also show you how to change the focal point because I cannot change the focal point in this. I could make the, I could make the ball blurry. So for example, if you want to make the ball blurry, blurry, you can, um, in this case, I would probably uh, add a, a motion blur to the baseball itself. So I'm going to use an effect. Um, I'm going to use a directional blur, I guess. Directional blur, place it on the baseball. Uh, first, I'm going to make it blur much stronger. No? So? Huh? I was expecting more. And then I add the direction, of course, the direction. I'm going to do it horizontal so it looks like as if it's flying. And there is the uh, directional blur. 30, 36 frames, that's quite long. Okay, something that you could also, of course, add to your player. Um, if that is what you want, maybe not the same strength, but a bit of directional blur as he was moving not 9.1 is too much, but just a little bit uh, makes it look maybe a bit more realistic than, than the, yeah, Ugh, you can see his face deforming. Okay, that's too much. That's a lot actually, 0 0.5 pixels, yeah. Okay, so it's a bit of motion blur. It's not motion blur, it's directional blur, but it's in the, dire in the direction of the motion. Uh, the next example that I would like to show you is uh, a, a selfie that I took a year ago or so. Um, was it the Milwaukee Art Museum, Calatrava? So basically, uh, I think it's quite clear. I'm going to put myself on a layer in the foreground and I'm trying to get the uh, the the uh, the bushes here on an extra layer in the foreground. I have to fix a lot because my arm is covering and there's also the, the, the garage entrance covered by my head. If I would be smart, I would have taken a picture there without me on it because then I could use it for simply for cleaning up. So you can never take enough images. In this case, I have to fix it roughly and you will see it, but it's just for the for you to see the technique. So first thing is get myself on an extra layer. That's kind of simple because I am in focus. Let's try it. Um, let's get two different layers. A, uh, sorry, a, two different duplicates. So here's another duplicate of me in the foreground. Use the, um, use the object selection tool, draw a rectangle around me. And there I am. I'm not going to spend much more time. Maybe fix the the hair, if I can say that. But not too much hair. But there's still enough for some mistakes. So here's the quick selection tool. Let's remove that. That's good. That's good. Let's add some here. Remove that. That's it. Don't look that close. Yeah, we will always, um, can always make it better. Good, so that's it. Here's some to remove a bit. Yes, good. So let's uh, give the layer me a layer mask. So it means everything else is turned invisible. That's fine. Here I am on a separate layer. And now I need to fix the background. So. Uh, I'm going to use a duplicate. Let's do the bushes first. I'm going to do duplicate another layer here and use background copy, call this uh, bushes. Okay, how do I fix it? First of all, I have to somehow get rid of my hand. I could try again to do the uh, the content aware fill, but I found out, so I don't, I don't care about all this. I just need to fix the, uh, this area. So let's do a rough selection first. Let's, here is my, uh, my selection tool and let's do a quick and dirty, uh, 
dirt mask around it, so like this, and give it a layer mask so that we have anything else removed. Oh, sorry, this one needs to be turned off. So now I'm gonna fix the uh, I'm gonna fix the the, the bushes uh, to get rid of the sky. I thought I could I could try to somehow uh, let's try to, to try to do a color select select color range I'm here select color range and use where am I sorry I'm on the on the wrong layer so here select color range and I'm going for the greens I'm gonna click once then I use shift click and I clip a click a couple of times and um, select all the greeneries here so the yellow the greens and so on you can see the selection here quite well that is okay and now the greens are selected so that means I cannot paint on them or I can only paint on the selected areas so now I'm inverting my selection control oh sorry select invert control shift I uh, select invert now everything else is selected and now I'm going onto the mask because I want to paint it in black use a brush let's use a brush that's bigger and now I can paint away the sky I could also use it by delete but this is quite so do not uh, paint away the, the grass only the sky so that is uh, quite helpful to get to get this uh, the selection up here I'm gonna remove the selection and now I need to fix it down fix it by removing my arm let's try the content aware fill um, usually it doesn't work well if there is um, uh, yeah a lot of hand on it let's try to do a re uh, no, you know what? I'm going to do it by hand. Use the clone stamp tool uh, here on the layer, of course. I'm going to select some bushes here. Alt click, and then I'm starting to paint on it. Let's get a larger brush, a little bit larger, not much larger. So pick here, paint there. Pick here. Start from the bottom. So that can take a while. I'm gonna speed up the video for that. So that is, um, I also removed uh, the, the, the lawn here in the foreground because I wanna have the bush on an extra layer. You will see it later. So. Uh, the bush will be on an extra layer and now I'm going to uh, fix the uh, the background that is of course on a different layer the background fixing I, I just need to remove the uh, the bush here and on only on the top and of course the grass here on the top so let's get another layer that I called duplicate layer uh, fixed background And let's turn off the bush and turn off the the good back the, the old background, and let's try the automatic fix first uh, to get the selection where I am on. I only have to do a control click on the mask here. I'm gonna make the select modify. I'm gonna expand the mask by 10 pixels so that everything is now. Let's do even more. Select uh, modify expand 10 more pixels. Okay, and now on the fixed background, I'm using the edit fill content aware and try what's happening. Okay, that looks kind of okay. I don't know. Um, as I said, I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, let's fix the details a bit. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool to um, get that. Again, I will speed up the video so that it makes it not as boring for you guys to watch.
okay, so here's a lot of distraction now going on in the image, but I just fixed it really quickly. Not fixed it, but I just made it look better. Remember, in the beginning, it looks, uh, looks kind of okay. So, um, I think that's it. I got me, I got the bushes, I got the fixed background, and I'll try to scale up the bushes a little bit so that we don't see a lot of the issues that I created behind removing the bushes. So, let's get it into, let's turn off the background, our backup, and let's get it into After Effects. Let's save it again as a Photoshop PSD and bring it into After Effects. I'm going to use the same uh, folder here. I'm going to bring the PSD in here. Use composition, of course, as editable layers. And here is the selfie and I double click the composition. So I get the layers open in here. Fixed background and delete the fixed background. Uh, this composition, by the way, is way too large because the picture was um, was in a large resolution. So later on, when we bring it into a regular 1920 by 1080, we have to scale it down. But I still, I'm going to do it in the original size and quality. Also, the aspect ratio of the picture is a little bit higher, so we can even pan in there. Let's get started. Let's take the three layers, make them uh, 3D, uh, the three layers, and make them 3D here. Then bring in a camera layer, new camera. I'm used the same thing. Custom. Uh, no, what did I have? Custom. A I don't know. 28 millimeter lens. Uh, okay. And I'm going to use two views. Horizontal again. Here's my result. And there's the look from the top. So me. Uh, what is the background here? We are right there. The background is the one that is in the back. Then we have the bushes. I'm going to bring the bushes forward. Of course, it looks weird because right now they are in front of my hand. I am um, scaling them down. So scale them down so that they fit again. Also, I'm going to move them slightly up. So I'm not going to scale them to their... I'm going to leave them slightly larger and move them left and up so that they give us a little bit more space when we move in. Maybe even more. Let's do 98 and move to the right, move up. Good. So that was the bushes. Also, I'm going to clone the bushes. Uh, so I uh, select my bushes layer, hit um, Hit, uh, oops, sorry, Control D for duplicate. I was still in Photoshop with Control J. Control D, duplicate. Here's my bushes number two, which is closer to the camera. That's fine. Also, I'm going to select it and get it closer to the camera. And this time, I'm going to move it down a bit and to the left. And I also scale it. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, scale bushes S and scale it even further down. It's just behind my hand so that there is an additional bush there. I couldn't have done that in Photoshop as well and fix it a little bit uh, so that it doesn't look exactly the same. And then there is me. And of course, I need to be, if it's a selfie, I need to be in the front. So I select myself and bring it uh, to the front so that I'm in front of everything. Again, I'm here. That's the background, the two, the two bushes and me. I'm closest to the camera. Again, uh, scale it down so that it fits the frame again. And now if we select our camera and move closer, you can see that we can go a bit till we see the worst errors. So the worst errors are somewhere here and behind my head and I, we can do a couple of uh, a couple of uh, a, a, a bit of movement before we see those areas. I'm going to move closer and I'm also going to move to the 
top left a bit, so like as if I would fly between my uh, left of my head. Okay, again, I'm just going for a couple of seconds of animation and let's quickly animate that roughly and you can all spend whatever time you want in your project. So um, let's get the cameras, P for position. I'm going to start at the beginning, animate the camera's position. Then I go to, let's say this time five seconds and I am moving it by hand, getting closer to the head and also to the top left. So I'm also going to move my camera a bit to the left and a bit up. That is a Y position. So I'm going to move it a bit up so that we can see the perspective change. That's almost too much. So we already see the weird parts. Good. And um, Okay, that's good, or it's okay, not good. The next thing is my camera moves in. Then I am gonna move my hand down, just like as if I would have a drone that's starting. I move my hand down, so it get a little bit, and maybe my head tilted a bit to the left. So um, that is me. Double click me, so it opens an extra window. You know those uh, pin, that pins that you place in the arm, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, uh, head. Let's try that. It look. The more you place, the more you ha the more you possibilities you have when you animate it. So let's go to uh, five seconds and move my head slightly to the left. My elbow down my hand down. Uh, looks worse. Okay. The, the head looks weird. Okay, it's just a, you know what, it's just a tutorial, not, it doesn't have to look good. So, and now we are almost finished because now I want to animate something else and that is, let's get back to the composition, here it is, and go back to, to uh, no, let's, we stay in a, uh, we stay in this view. Uh, the next thing is if I select my camera, and I let's double click it. Oh, have to double click it here. Double click it for a minute. Uh, we have the focus distance. And if I move the focus distance, watch what happens here in this top view. You can see this line is the focal distance. So this is what is sharp and everything uh, closer or further away is not sharp. But that depends on it's called depth of field and it depends on the f stop that we use we have a very wide lens so we have to go drastically to a very low level um, so i'm gonna try 0 0.2 and you can see when i change the position and i'm going this time i'm not going to do it in the pop-up window i'm going here for um, the camera and here is the camera options and you can see focus distance when i move the focus distance to let's say the layer where I am, you can see the background is clearly out of focus. I am. I think I can do it even stronger. So where is the? Where is the? Let's double click it again. Camera. Uh, the f stop. Let's try f stop. Zero point. Even zero one is maybe too much. Zero point fifteen. So you can see the background is really blurry now. Uh, but I am still sharp, so you can bring, like in a 3D movie, you can bring additional focus to the foreground uh, and the background is out of focus. But what I want to do is, as we fly closer to the scene, I want to place the sharp, I want to move the focal point to the background. So at the beginning, the foreground is sharp. So here is it together with where I am. And now I hit uh, focus distance, animate. Let's bring this to the beginning, yes, animate for focus distance, and then go to the end of our animation, again with shift, and now I'm moving my focus distance so that the background 
that is the last layer here, the background is in focus. So Gita trees and me, now I am blurry. So let's see how that looks as a final result. So I am in focus here, and then I'm moving forward, and the background is in focus. Okay, so all those values can be animated in order to bring. Again, if you watch the examples, that is way too much movement. So I should have done way less of animating the camera, but this is just for demonstration purposes, so everything should be included in this tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you get some ideas. Uh, Google it, find some other people who did uh, similar effects. Maybe you get some ideas for your own work. Um, if you like it, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, subscribe for further videos because I'll see you in the next video.